this video we're going to discuss um, something called Descartes' Rule of Signs. Descartes' Rule of Signs is a useful tool to help to determine uh, how many possible zeros uh, a given polynomial function will have. And to do so, we look at the function and the function evaluated at an opposite value of x. Uh, and that tells us um, the number of positive real zeros the, the function, the polynomial function can have, and the possible number of negative real zeros. So to start, let's look at this example here. Describe the possible zeros of the function f of x equals negative 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 1. Right, so if we write this over here, all right, rewrite it because I'm going to use uh, a different color here in a moment. f of x equals negative 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 1. Okay, if we look at that function, what we have to look at is how many times does the coefficients here change signs? How many times do they change sign? So from negative 3x cubed to positive 2x squared, it changes sign. So it changes from a negative to a positive. Then from 2x squared, it changes sign to negative x once. It goes from positive to negative. And then negative x to negative 1, it stays the same. So it changes sign, this function f of x changes signs twice. So that means that there are two positive real zeros. Or two possible positive real zeros. Or we can subtract even numbers from this number, the number that it changes, until we get to zero. So 2 minus ne the first even number is 2, so there could also be zero positive real zeros. All right, and those are the only two possibilities. If the function changed sign, say, five times, then there'd be five positive, five, three, or one possible uh, positive real zeros. Now, to look at the negative real zeros, or the possible number of negative real zeros, we have to take a look at the function f and evaluate it at the opposite value of x. So wherever there's an x, replace it with a negative x. Okay. Well, if we take negative x cubed, we're really going to get a negative number here. Okay, So a negative times a negative is going to be a positive. So we have 3x cubed Positive 2 times negative x squared. Negative x squared is positive, so this number stays positive. Double negative makes a positive. And minus 1. And what you should realize here, or what you should notice is, these coefficients, 3x, 2x, and x are all positive. The constant here is negative. The only sign changes from the linear term x to the constant. It changes from positive to negative. So that tells us that there is one possible negative zero. Okay? And that's how we find this out. So that it has two or zero positive real roots, real zeros, or one and one negative zero. Let's look at let's look at another example here. Let's say we have the function g of x equals 4x to the fourth 
minus 13x cubed minus 21x squared plus 38x minus 8. And we're asked to describe the zeros. Well, first off, for the positive, zeros, positive real zeros, we look at the function g of x, and we look at how many times it changes sign. Okay, so from 4x to the fourth to negative 13x cubed, there's one sign change. It changes from positive to negative. Negative 13x cubed to negative 21x squared, the sign doesn't change. From negative 21x squared to 38x, the sign changes from negative to positive, and then from 38x to negative 8, that's another sign change. That's positive to negative. So we have one, two, three variations in sign. So there are three, or three minus an even number is two, or one positive, positive. real zeros. Right. Once we find out the number of sign changes, we subtract even numbers. We go from 3 to 1. If we had 5, we go 5, 3, 5, or 3, or 1. If we had 7, we have 7, then 5, then 3, then 1. But in this case, there's only 3 sign changes, so it's either 3 or 3 minus 2 is 1 positive real zeros. Now let's look at the negative real zeros. To do so, we need to look at g of negative x. g of negative x is going to be 4 times negative x to the 4th minus 13 times negative x cubed minus 21 times negative x squared plus 38 times negative x minus 8. Well, negative x to the fourth, that's going to be a positive number anyway, so this term doesn't behave any differently than this term right here, than 4x to the fourth. So that stays the same. negative number cubed is going to produce a negative number. So a negative times a negative is going to be a positive. So this is really plus 13x cubed. Negative 21 times f negative x squared. Negative x quantity squared isn't going, to be the, isn't going to behave the same way as a value of x squared. So this value is really going to be minus 21x squared. 38 times negative x, that's going to be minus 38x, and then minus 8. Now let's look at the number of sign changes here. From 4x to the 4th to 13x cubed, there are no sign changes. From 13x cubed to negative 21x squared, that changes from positive to a negative. So that goes from positive to a negative. We have a negative to a negative, negative to a negative. So there's only one sign change here. So there is, at most, one negative real zero. And we could use the uh, rational zeros or rational roots theorem to find these zeros. Uh, but that's uh, the general gist of Descartes' rule of sign. Uh, it was named after a mathematician named uh, René Descartes, founder of the Cartesian coordinate plane, uh, and how the graph that we use to graph all of our functions, linear functions, quadratic functions,
polynomial function and so forth. So that's Descartes' rule of signs.